Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and as always for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our Series 10 VGC content and we have another great team to feature on the channel today based all around Xerneas. So last week on the mind blown video that we had, I had one of you fine people reach out to me. It was Raga Bonsai, I think their username is. I'll put up their details on the screen now, uh, asking if I'd feature a rental team of theirs. And of course, like always, if you have a rental team that you'd like to see featured on the channel, please send it over. I would be more than happy to feature it. We've only got a month left of series 10, so we're gonna save the moment with this non-Dynamax format until it does change over into what would be series 11 and um, if you'd like to see a video on the sp supposed leaks about what series 11 rules will be let me know down in the comment section below and we'll cover that and uh, have a little discussion around what the possibilities mean for the next series in the VGC circuit so we've got a month left like I say of series 10 and uh, in today's video we've got Xerneas team Xerneas doing extremely well at the minute and uh, an interesting team to say the least from Bonsai so I really appreciate this being sent over we've got the Sableye here really nice option I think it's something that I do like uh, in the format with that prankster ability. It's got immunity to fake up because of its part ghost typing. Um, Snarl on call, really nice options. On call is really great in this format, especially that Will O Wisp as well, which is there to kind of help shut down things like Zashin. Uh, and with that prankster boost as well, you can always kind of get that off before it can attack into something like Xerneas. Uh, then you've got a supporting cast of Volcarona, uh, provides nice support with the Rage Powder, especially for the Xerneas. You know, you need that redirection there to help it get get the geomancy set up uh, you've got tailwind support from the suicune so speed control there as well and helping hand which is always good to support the rest of the things on the team uh, you've got choice band rillaboom which is a bit of a throwback to previous formats that we've had uh, but one i really do like obviously a lot of kind of power coming out of the rillaboom here especially with the grassy glide and then when you pair that up with something like the suicune that has helping hand uh, it can be quite formidable and really catch opponents off guard and then we round off with the lander is here with the assault vest and the the payback tech is really nice especially on the the av variant gives you a nice option against things like shadow rider calyrex uh, because the payback will double in damage if you go after your opponent so if you're hit and then you return uh, the payback will be doubled uh, so it's a really nice way to be able to kind of remove something like shadow rider calyrex with the landerus as well as providing intimidate support for the whole team and then we come to the main center point of the team which is the xerneas uh, got a little bit of a a more kind of obscure move set obviously the standard moon blast geomancy protector there but opting for focus blast as well um which is a little bit risky at times but quite fun as well and if it does pay off then it can work wonders because uh, it has got low accuracy but it is a very powerful attack and gives you that little bit of additional coverage that uh, sometimes you may be lacking with Xerneas. So this is a team, there's a rental code. I uh, I hope if you do try it out uh, you do enjoy it. Obviously Bonsai, big shout out to you for uh, providing us with the code and at the end of the day friends I hope you enjoyed today's episode. So without further ado we will jump into game one of today's episode. First match of today against Lucky Plum uh, playing a Zygarde team which is really exciting for us to kick off with. They've got Zygarde, they got Regieleki, Incinero, Tapu Fini, Alola Ninetales and Whimsicott. So um, lots of things to keep in mind here. You know the Xerneas on face value looks really good against Zygarde, uh, especially if we've got the Geomancy set up. Zygarde's going to really struggle here. They haven't got any redirection as well to kind of protect the Zygarde from those Moon Blasts once we get it set up. But we've got to worry about things like Aurora Veil on the Ninetales that could be something that you know gives us it slows us down a little bit with that kind of screen protection and also the fact that they got whimsicott here they can throw out on court as well which will make things a little bit difficult so really what we need to do is try and position something like volcarona next to gm uh the, the xerneas when we do get that geomancy up so we can just redirect that on call for one turn and then that gives us the kind of the a little bit of momentum to kind of start uh utilizing xerneas really well after that uh we've got to worry about haze as well from the opposing type of finny uh, that could cause us all sorts of issues so i think what we'll do is we will lead with um i think xerneas sableye volcarona and i think we want rillaboom as well so we'll lock in with those because we're running out of time um <laughs> and we don't want to time out especially against this but um i think having the rillaboom in the back is a nice option to bring in because the tapu finny may come out first we want to try and 
we've got to be very careful with how we set up Xerneas. We want to be a bit patient, I think, because they've got a lot of text to kind of shut down. And I think that's one of the fundamentals that you kind of need to have behind you when you are building um, uh, a Zygod team. You need to have really adequate ways to check something like Xerneas that could be a little bit of a problem. So do you see the Ninetales and um, the Whimsicott come out for my opponent? Now, we could get taunted here. Um, I don't really want to lock in to Geomancy just yet. We could just go for the Moonblast into the Ninetales. Um, we could Snarl as well. Uh, or we could Quash. I imagine Auroraville and Tailwind here from my opponent. Uh, we've got to watch out for Sableye as well because Sableye could get damage pretty heavily so we could switch Sableye out into Volcarona here um, it would then allow us to kind of have that redirection Geomancy the next turn and not worry so much about the Whimsicott or we could just fire off a heat wave but it makes my opponent have to start and think about um, repositioning uh, they are going for the switcheroo so is this a lagging tail maybe and Zernius, which isn't great uh, I will say it is not ideal because uh, now we can't get a Geomancy up but Potentially we can, you know. Potentially we can. Oh, well, we get a nice fat critical hit, which isn't ideal, to be honest, because we kind of really wanted the, the Ninetales to stay on the field. So a little bit of uh, RNG help for us there. Um, but the lagging tail is not going to be great for us, in all honesty. Um, the fact is that we'll be moving last even if we get a geomancy up uh, and also the fact that uh, we've got good old tapu finney coming in um now it's a t it's a t it's a prime time to get something like um really boom onto the field uh but the thing is we can't really afford to lose xerneas that's the big thing for us you know uh we could maybe have Heat waved here, just got rid of the, the Whimsicott. But I do worry about like Scald coming out from the Tapu Fini, and you don't really know what kind of build it is. Uh, but it's more than likely, I think, that the Finny is probably more of a support variant in this sort of team. That's kind of what you see with the Zygarde. Uh, so we don't shouldn't need to worry too much. The, uh, the Fairy Aura is boosting everything on my opponent's side of the field. If they do have something like Moonblast or Double Moonblast, you know. Comes a cut going out. A Zygarde. Oh, it's Incineroar. They haven't brought the Zygarde here, so that's kind of interesting. Um, it's a nice switch from my opponent. Obviously, check in the, in, the, the Rillaboom switch in. Uh, they will have Fake Out as well support going into this next turn. But um, the thing is with the Band, it makes it very difficult for my opponent to kind of... Uh, combat the the Rillaboom and I think we probably want to switch boom out uh, oh man, Moonblast still do so much damage even though we are moving last every turn um, even behind the Aurora Veil you know the Calm Mind's not ideal but as long as we got Rillaboom kind of on the field or in our party we're, we're, we don't need to worry too much about the Tapu Fini you know because the Fini we just need to get a bit of chip on it um, and get Boom back on the field, and then we're kind of in a good position. The only thing that would really threaten Rillaboom, to be honest, would be um, the Incineroar. Uh, I think we bring in Volcarona here because the thing is, if this Incineroar goes for the fake out into Rillaboom, which you're expecting it to go for now, right? Uh, we can catch it with the Rocky Helmet, and the Rocky Helmet ship might be enough to put it in range for a Moonblast, because we've already seen the Moonblast damage, what we can do to Incineroar. So, potentially, with the Rocky Helmet ship here, we might be able to remove the Incineroar, and if we can, then that kind of that frees up Boom to kind of uh, come in and just deal with the, uh, the type of thing. We see a Draining Kiss come out. Uh, it is boosted, but it's still not... Well, it does... Actually, not too bad damage. You're not, not seeing um, ooh, a U-turn. Okay. That's not too bad. Takes a bit of damage. So it's definitely in uh, Moonblast range now, which is fine. Um, and I think Volcarona probably now. Now we're able to chip down this Whimsicott with a Moonblast. 
it'll be in either Moonblast range or it will be in Heatwave range uh, this next turn. So, you know. And it kind of, like, you know, this goes to show, like, you know, Xerneas here, my opponent's not really um, paying it much attention, kind of ignoring it every time, you know. Uh, you don't necessarily need to always Geomancy with it. Obviously, it is a kind of game-winning uh, kind of combination most of the time. But Xerneas is very powerful on its own, so it can, you know, it you don't necessarily always need to um, to get the Geomancy off for it to perform well. It's very strong just on its kind of own without the stat boost. Obviously, the stat boost make it just ridiculous and uh, able to match up against many other things in the format. Uh, and I think this turn we could probably just go Moonblast and um, Heat Wave here. And we'll see what my opponent decides to go for. Because we're not really giving my opponent too many options where they can utilize the Encore potentially on the um, the Whimsicott. We may see a Tailwind here, probably be the most kind of optimal play for my opponent now, just to give that Tapu Fini a bit of a speed boost so it can hit um, everything before. Uh, but we're not even seeing that. So uh, we get the Heat Wave off into the Whimsicott. Deciding to go for an attack here instead, which is good. Uh, do get the crit, but I don't think it really matters at this point. Um, and the Draining Kiss this time into the Xerneas. Let's see. Plus one, how much this does. Respectable amount of damage, to be honest. Um, you know. But with the Incineral coming back in, if we get the... Uh, we could have done with the drop there. That would have been ideal. Now, all we really need to do at this point is get uh, Moonblast onto Incineral. I mean, a Bug Buzz might even be enough at this point. But we could Rage Powder and just Moonblast the Incineral this next turn. Because um, I don't really... Th at this point, I don't really want to switch in something like... Um, Rillaboom to take a Draining Kiss, you know. Uh, it probably will be able to take it, but it'd be nice to be able to kind of remove the Incineral. We've got to think about Fake Out as well, so we could potentially just protect here Bug Buzz into the Incineral. Um, or we could potentially just double protect this turn um, just to get around the fake out. It might be worth doing that and then next turn we can we can Rage Powder and um, we can go for the Moonblast into the Incineral. We've obviously got to worry about Muddy Water as well as a potential but I think this, um, this type of Finny's got to kind of think about that as a possibility. Okay so just the double up into the Volcarona there. Um, and the terrain, yeah, I think the terrain ending the next turn is probably good as well. So that means that when Boom comes in, it's got a kind of a free shot at the, the type of Finny. But we want to be able to remove the Incineral before that, that time, if possible. Um, okay, is the Incineral just out of range now? Is the Aurora Veil still up on the field? Um, actually, even if it is... If it attacks it into Volcaron here with a Flare Blitz, that Rocky Helmet damage will be enough. Um, and Volcaron will be able to take a Draining Kiss, which you would imagine the, yeah, the Finny's going to go for. So that's all right. We just want to see a, a Flare Blitz now from the, the Incineral. That chip from the Recoil and the Rocky Helmet damage will be enough. And we get the Flame Body. Because it's a contact move. I didn't realize that. I guess when you're, uh, when you're kissing, it is a contact. So here's a Flare Blitz into Volcarona and yeah the recoil ha huh, yeah it's gonna be enough for Moonblast to take it down even behind the Aurora Veil and now Boom can come in and um, we can mm, maybe not maybe not maybe not now hmm hmm surely a grassy glide will be enough to get the Incineroar though I think and the Tapu Fini got to protect when the boom comes onto the field so that the Incineral is going to be able to um, to pick up the knockout. It's a little awkward, really. But the one thing we could potentially do is just U-turn into the Incineral. Um, U-turn. Uh, Banded U-turn would be enough, yeah. And then get Sableye in. Because we don't really worry too much about the Finny getting the Draining Kiss off at the minute, you know, if it does knock out the Sableye. Um, and it's kind of fine, because it comes down to Rillaboom versus Tapu Finny and Banded. 
I mean, you know, we're going to be able to beat it, whatever. So probably better off going for the U-turn um, and Moonblast into the Incineroar here. And like I say, I think the U-turn will be enough. I just worry about gla Grassy Glide Bandage should be enough to get the Incineroar. But again, um, I, it's a little bit iffy, right? I'm kind of pegging my hopes on this turn with the type of Finny protecting, but we haven't seen a single protect from the Finny. Ooh, okay. Well, luckily enough, we did go for the U-turn and we are faster, so that's all right. And we'll see a draining kiss into Sableye. So that's, like I say, it's fine at the minute because we've got the Rillaboom to kind of, uh, we do actually survive that. It's where the Flare Blitz will go now. Uh, but the, if it goes into Xerneas, then it's going to go down. Um, but it's into the, the save line. Okay. Probably not going to go down now. But the, the Moonblast will take it down. So that's alright. And then, yeah, Boom can come in and just finish this up. So, that's alright. Forget that we got the Moonblast there from the Xerneas. It's a little bit drawn out, this game. But, I mean, it, it kind of shows that you've got to be a bit more, I think, calculated with how you're dealing with the threats. Because we've seen how much the Finny's doing with the Fairy Booster Draining Kiss and plus one. It's doing quite a bit of damage, but, it, you know, my opponent hasn't protected it at all. So, I'll be surprised if it protects here. And with a band, um, we should be alright to pick up the one-hit KO against it here. And especially a double up, but I'd imagine this is a knockout. Yeah, ooh, it hangs on. Draining Kiss going to come out. It is going to see. Don't think this knocks out. No. So, we're alright, we're alright, because the Moonblast should... Should, is it going to pick up the knockout? Maybe not. I don't think so. Um, be interesting to see if it does. But uh, this Finny is a beast. An absolute beast. I think if it got like maybe, you know, one more boost under its belt. It could be a different game. Uh, but thankfully we got the Grassy Glide, which is going to be able to uh, to close this one up now. But um, Finny, a bit of a thorn on our side for this one. And quite surprised the fact that it's, you know, more of a calm mind build. A Zero Auroveil finally wears off, gosh, after all those turns. So Nine Tails, even though it did go down to the crit, the, the, the start didn't do much else. You know, it's really, you know, supported the team pretty well. Yeah, but uh, we do get the cancellation and pick up the first win of today's episode, which is always very good. And uh, lucky, 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 I can't see, can't see. Anyway, good game to our opponent. But yeah, a nice one for us to kick off with. And we will jump now uh, straight into game two. We've got Lilu up next and they are playing a team of Kyogre, Togodomaru, Feromosa, uh, Galarian, Moltres, Venusaur and Torkoal. So uh, a mixed weather team here. We've got the rain and the sun. Uh, we've got Venusaur taking advantage of that Torkoal uh, drought ability with its chlorophyll doubling its speed. You've got uh, then the, the Kyogre kind of being on the other side of that. Um, and nothing to really take advantage of the rain here other than the Kyogre. But lots of support options around it. You've got Togodomaru with the lightning rod support. Um, and then obviously things like um, Fake Out and Nuzzle that will cause us a few issues as well. Um, and obviously the Steel type, and we can't just ignore that with, with Xerneas. Uh, Feromosa and... I mean, the Galarian Moltres is not too worried about, but the Feromosa are always something you have to kind of think about uh, just because it is... Um, so fast and it can do it's just such a kind of a like it just can have so many it's got such a deep move pool you kind of it keeps you guessing the whole time so how are we going to approach this i think volcarona against that sun core is pretty nice um probably want landorus as well because landorus feels pretty good here rillaboom okay so i don't know if we lead xerneas i think we could lead togodomaru uh uh, let's go Xerneas, let's go Rillaboom and Suicune. Can I lock it in? I don't know if I have, I don't know if I have. This might be a disaster. If we've not got Boom, it makes this matchup very difficult. But what, oh, they're definitely bringing Kyogre. They're definitely bringing Kyogre. I mean, the thing is with Sableye and Xerneas, you know, you've got the, the, the option where you can go Quash. Um, okay, well, there we go, so. Gonna see Kyogre, Kyogre, and um, Venus will come out turn one, which isn't ideal for us in all honesty, because the Volcarona is not in a great spot. Um, we can snarl here. 
maybe switch into Suicune. Yeah, we, we, we timed out, so let's see what we can do. But obviously, Boom would have been better, I think, in the back. Um, but Boom struggles against Venusaur, so, you know, let's see what we can do here. Origin Pulse coming out. Hopefully, Save Light can take this. I don't know if we'll be able to. Yeah, we do. So, Save Light trained very well. And Weather Ball coming out into the Suicune slot, I would imagine. Yeah. Which is fine. We can get a Snarl. And then we can lock the Venusaur into um, Weather Ball this next turn. Kind of gives Suicune a little bit more room to kind of function. We can get a Tailwind up. Hopefully then Sableye goes down. Opens the door for Xerneas to come onto the field. Um, get a Geomancy set up. And then we can go from there. So let's see what my opponent does. So, yeah. Disaster. I hate timing out in team preview. And I do it constantly when I'm recording. It's because I talk so much, you know, times about um, ooh, the talk all coming in. That's what we like to see. We like to see that Sableye might stick around for a little bit longer now. Uh, but we do force, um, at least we force... The Venusaur out, potentially. We can Ice Beam into that slot, or we could Scald into the Torkoal slot. We don't really need to worry about what uh, my opponent's doing. They go for that Weather Ball into Suicune, but we're going to be able to take that pretty well. Uh, at this point, we want Sableye to kind of go down, because we can't really afford to switch anything in um, on this Torkoal. We need to get Xerneas set up, really. Um, but if we can remove the Torkoal, we kind of remove... Um, we could Snarl, catch Kyogre coming in on the switch and just go for that Scald into the Torkoal. It's kind of risky though if my opponent does switch in. The, the, like you switch Venusaur out here to Kyogre potentially. It's risky because you're setting up the rain and yeah, like Torkoal, unless you protect here, it's going to take an absolute chunk of damage, you know. Um, depends what we see the Torkoal go for. Yeah, I mean, it's not ideal. And you kind of want to remove that Sun element from the field because then... You know, <sighs> come on, don't miss. Yeah, we miss the Torkoal, but I guess, I think we Ice Beam into the Torkoal slot the next turn. We see a Weather Ball come out, unless we get Xerneas onto the field now, which is, yeah, this is exactly what we want. Okay. Um, okay, so we can get the Geomancy up, which is good. And at least we get the Snarl into the Kyogre, so it puts it down to minus one, which is, which is always nice. Um... But I think you probably want to switch that Torkoal out this next turn. That's why I'm talking about like Ice Beaming into that slot. Because I think we could potentially catch uh, the Venusaur on the switch in. Because I think you want the Sun so the Venusaur can then, you know, uh, have that Chlorophyll boost. Um, but an Ice Beam should be enough to get the Torkoal, I think, uh, regardless. But we catch the Venusaur on the switch in, which I don't know if it'll be enough to take it down. But if we can, that'd be ideal. Uh, and there's the Geomancy here from the, the Xerneas, which is what we want. That should put us ahead of the Venusaur anyway, when it gets its Chlorophyll boost, depending on how the, the Xerneas is trained, of course, in this squad. But, and we'll see if this Ice Beam does a good chunk. If we can knock out the Venusaur here, that's huge for us. I don't know if we'll be able to. No, okay. Origin Pulse, not ideal. So we can avoid in. Could have done with it, avoid like dodging on the uh, the Xerneas side. But we should take this a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. That's that's fine. That's like that's super fine. That's super fine. Um. So I think what we'll do is because you can expect probably um the Torkoal to come in on the Kyogre slot. I don't think there's much harm in just going for a Scald here into Kyogre. Um. Okay. The Moonblast will be enough to get the Venusaur anyway. Uh, but we do see a double protect. So trying to stall out the Tailwind as well. Because it's as long as we got the Tailwind on top of our boost, there's no way that Venusaur gets a jump onto us. So that's a big thing what my opponent's probably wanting to do at this stage. Um, and the Tailwind pit us out. So, I mean, what we could potentially do just to be safe here is... We could just Tailwind. I kind of want to have a look at uh, Xerneas' 
stats though, just to just to see um, if we are going to outspeed 49. Yeah, yeah, we will. We will. Even Max, I think. And then we'll scold and catch that Torkoal on the switch in. Yeah. So even without the Tailwind, I think we're going to be able to outspeed the Venu. Yeah, the Torkoal's coming in. We know what is going on. This is where we get caught out and the Venusaur outspeeds us and puts us to sleep. But no. no. And it's not going to be able to take a plus two move last. Unfortunately, this is just, yeah, Xerneas having a, a, a good old time. I mean, it's so difficult for an opponent to deal with Xerneas once it's set up, you know. It really is. Like, you need some heavy speed control. You need Haze. You need a Steel type. You need a lot of things. And this is why Xerneas is so good. But it's always nice kind of featuring Xerneas. And especially these more, like, really well-built meta teams, you know. Um, just to kind of show you, like... How they can function, I think the first game is a good example of how, how you know, when sometimes your opponent kind of is able to shut you down, how you can still utilize Xerneas um, the best of your ability, you know. We are going to see the rain come back, the Feromosa obviously going to come in. Um, it does threaten us because it probably does have the Sash. Um, what we could do is just Scald into it here. Scald into the Feromosa, protect Xerneas a turn, just to be on the safe side because we don't want to... I don't want to throw away the game at this point, you know, we can't get overconfident and think, oh, it's done, you know, my opponent's back's against the wall, they're going to make whatever play they feel necessary to kind of try and pull this game back around, and once that Xerneas is knocked out, ooh, ooh, go for the close combat, mm, into Suicune, it's a nice play from my opponent, so I would have left the Xerneas kind of free, ha, huh, okay, um, well, this is... It's still alright. Okay. So, it's a really nice read from my opponent. Like, really nice read. Getting rid of the Suicune. Getting rid of that Tailwind threat. But, the fact is that Volcarona should outspeed the Kyogre. We should be able to pull... Um, I think it's max speed Volcarona. Pretty sure. Check somewhere. 167. Ah, it's just about... Just about one speed point law. So, that's fine. So yeah, what we can do is just go for the, the Moon Blast and um, we'll go for the, the Rage Powder as well. And it's unlikely that the Feromos has got... Um... Ooh, it's got Faint. Okay. Getting around that Rage Powder. Very nice. Moon Blast should take down the Kyogre here. <laughs> this, could be, this could be bad. This could be bad if we miss the knockout. But we don't, thankfully. Yeah. But I mean, we can just continue to Rage Powder at this point. Because they're not really going to knock us out with Faint. And that's the only that's the only thing that they've got to do. Um, yeah, and the battle cancelled. So we do pick up another victory there. So that's very good. Uh, but very good game to my opponent. Very entertaining game. And that's two nice games with the team. Hopefully it's been a good uh, overall kind of showcase of the team. We talked through how it kind of functions. We got to see most of the Pokemon. There were a couple there that we didn't, but we'll wrap up now with today's rental team. Here is today's rental code, and if you do try the team out, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Big shout out to Bonsai once again for providing us with the rental team, and uh, I'm a little sad that we didn't get to see the Focus Blast today, but we didn't really need it in too many situations. Maybe Game 1 or a couple of times where we could have maybe went after the Incineroar with it rather than a moon blast but it's more consistent to go with a moon blast i think in those situations and with how delicate that situation was against the tapu fini it felt a bit more pragmatic to go with a moon blast rather than risk the focus blast and miss a couple of times and it would have just set us back a little bit further so um overall really nice team i think the only thing that we didn't really get to see much of today was the Landorus, uh, but you can imagine the Landorus performs very well uh, against other kind of archetypes that we'd see in the format. But um, yeah, have fun with the team. Let me know your thoughts down below as well on uh, Xerneas as a build in the format. It's a shame we didn't come against any kind of Zashin because I feel like the team's got uh, some really nice ways to deal with Zashin, especially within Sableye and the Volcarona and obviously the Landorus uh, to come in and kind of help there. And you've also got the added bonus that you've got Suicune there that can scald and burn it and uh, not take massive amounts of damage from Behemoth Blade if you can kind of keep that in check. So um, I really like the team. A big shout out to Bonsai and we'll wrap things up there, friends. We'll be back very soon with more VGC Series 10 action. And again, just a reminder, if you'd like to see like an update, 
on on the potential series 11 leaks and things like that i know addy did a video but it'd be nice to maybe start the conversation about it uh, let me know down in the comment section and we'll put something together for this week so friends have a great rest of your day take care of yourselves more importantly than anything else and i will see you all for another episode on the channel very soon so until then take care and bye bye